I hate to break the fishing news after your check, but I'd like to speak about the ice hockey. Congratulations, you're one of the 13 Man, listeners of the Real Life Podcast. Sexist. We just traded a migraine in for like an orgasm. You might want to mark that yeah. down. Yeah. Yep. All of my projects are on schedule until they're not. A member of the Nation Network Podcast. <laughs> about as funny as we're going to get today. I think that's called hitting for the real life cycle. We talked through the whole intro. Two people are eating a bread bowl while we start the show. Shared bread bowl. Two comments. Yes. Yeah. Two comments. Shadow dog bash and their delicious bread bowl soup. At Hell the yeah. moment, Look, it's corn chowder. Nice Unreal. We were talking about Zins and that sixes are just too much. It's too much. I got to draw. You got to draw a line somewhere. <laughs> sixes yeah, are heavy duty. I, at the Jays game last week, I popped in a six. And uh, it, it requires a lot of maintenance. Like you take it <laughs> out, too much. calm down from it, let the sweat subside, plop it back in. But your guest that you were with, did he just rock it the whole time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sleeps like, within it. I'm I'm soft. <laughs> he's, got, oh, yeah. he's just rocking. Like if there was a sin one, I would, ro- I would run with it. Because the mm. problem is like they can really derail you. <laughs> yeah. Can they throw you for a car? Ask Brad Stepanko. Right, Ask Brad Stepanko. Yeah, our yeah. boy Brad. And derail, they derailed me and Jasper. You got to be careful with everything these days. I swear, like, I, I know people that smoke weed and I don't smoke it anymore. I used to. But you could smoke a whole joint to yourself when I was a teenager. And now you take like one hit and you are, you got to call your mom. <laughs> mom, come get me. Maybe you're a pussy. This. Everything is too. Put maybe. it into it. <laughs> bread bowls. This bread bowl looks amazing. Now, although shout that, out to Wanye, proper mic etiquette. His mic, you can't hear him right now because his mic is eight feet from his face. What am yeah. I doing? <laughs> Don't care. It's not far <laughs> enough, I guess. Is there a better food ever created? Like, man, back in the day when they first made bread, like, oh, like, God has to be one of the first foods ever made. They fucking nailed it, like, immediately. I can eat white toast. I would with like just the first iterations of white, white toast. toast. Jay's going to kill you for just saying you white eat white bread. toast. I'm not going to kill you. Toasted. You're a ruptured uh, appendicitis. It's like well. rye. It's like rye bread. It's not like white. It's like rye. It's like this special kind of like rye bread. That's there's like, good, let me there's ask good you a white bread out there. It all depends the type of flour. Don't you think not that enriched wheat flour? The evolution of bread probably changed significantly. I bet those first <laughs> loaves were disgusting. Maybe. Do we sell all- the good bread at uh, our joint? Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, like no enriched wheat flour. That's all I know. You can't have that. <laughs> nope. It is modified. It is broken down to its tr- purest form and then like built back up. It's not good. But anyways, I only, I only bread. eat vegan bites. I eat so much granola bread bites. and I'm almost positive that it gives me that I'm gluten. I have gluten problems because it just makes me feel like shit. I so love bread. I never quit it. I love bread. Yeah, it's the best. There's so much sugar in it, though. I didn't know that. Really? No, I do. It all well, depends on the bread, but yes. You just off the rack bread. Yeah, oh yeah yeah well there's a lot of like you get like we'll call it artisan bread but just the more bread made from scratch versus bread you buy off the shelf at the, at the grocery store it'll last like five times longer the grocery store stuff so it just oh, tells totally. you what's going on i just yeah. love i love bakery owner jay he's eating a bread bowl and i thought it was a pretty logical question <laughs> What do they do with all the bread they dig out of there? They just Seems throw like it out. A lot of di- <laughs> they make croutons. He gives me with an eye you, roll, and I'll back and up. Was, you made him look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, so like, I felt real okay, small. All right, let's let's, let's 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 understand the operation. Not everyone has the same context that you have. Bread and butter and dog patch. They right. are connected. Yes. Bread and butter is a bakery. Dog patch is a menu. That guess what is bread focused? Mm, Why? Because bread and butter is attached to it. So anytime we have bread products, we think what more bread products can we make from those products? Mm -hmm. I should have counted it like wood. They don't just throw away all the shavings. They make plywood. There you go. (laughs) That's true. true. Croutons are our plywood. When when I go to my- Hold on, hold on. Is that true? It's not like the fine, fine sawdust, but like lots of the the, the chips that come that when mm. making wood. There's a lot of wastage, and I that's yeah, what plywood's made out of. I thought plywood. Well, just no, like cut down like wood. OSB no, no, is like see, organized. Yeah, pieces. I just when I go to one of my best friends with a curiosity. Have you ever seen the movie <laughs> Salt and Sea? <laughs> Remember when he's sitting in the car and he asks, he says, "JFK, his middle name was F." And he goes, "Well, stand it for Franklin." And he goes. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks for not laughing at me. And it was the moment between the two. But that's, that's, one was just uh, curious. That's different. One was just curious and the other one was soft. Because that's about a subject that doesn't pertain to yeah. either of them. To, yes. Well, no. Bread Bowl's not a joke, Chalmers. So you're 
So you're the red guy now. So I can't ask you a question about baking without no. expecting to be. Uh, yes. Come ridiculed. correct. Come correct. You're for, he's a two bakery owner. I know very limited yeah. about baking, but he's a what I know, baker. I know. Yeah. Well, do you know how to garden? Because guess who's a gardener all of a sudden? <laughs> I am addicted, man. I bought this like 36 thing pods where you could just like germinate seeds. All 36 germinated. It's enough for the garden. Do you think I stopped there? No, I did not. I went and bought 36 more pods and I'm germinating 36 yeah, more. Are you, are you, growing, are you living off the land? I'm just not even going to know where to put <laughs> You're going grid. full off grid? You should no. see what I got. Like are you, how close are you to getting chickens? Pretty quick. And, and also like at urban least apiary. Urban at least one eggs. Beehive. What did you say? One beehive in the backyard. And become oh, an apiarist. Man. Your own eggs, honey, a couple and, eggs, yeah. some bread what you love. Breakfast. Get yeah. a pig so I can have bacon too. That's wow, we're well, gonna kill a pig. Well, what you, you have to oh, kill a chicken. Sad? You're gonna eat, well, then you have to learn to butcher and slaughter. Think Charles, if you get two chickens, you get eggs every day. You don't have to kill anything. Yeah, they lay eggs every day, buddy. Every day, holy rooster. It's like you could eat cocks or imagine your no, dog. No, whoa, 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 whoa. you don't want a cock around because then no, you can't then eat them chickens. eggs, they're all sperminated. You, you're into germination. This is, this is how much I know about e- chickens. So chickens so just do you think lay his middle eggs F? and they're unfertilized eggs. And they then just we eat them. them all the time. So so unfertilized eggs. That's according to uh, poultryextension.org. Fair. That's not be, that's not my choice for you poultry news. But you okay. know what I'm glad about this is, is that they're online and they can't ridicule you for the questions we're about to ask since they're an egg expert. A hen, female chicken, mm-hmm. generally lays up to one egg per day. I can eat more than that. So well, I can I eat like more than you. Yeah, that's why it's chickens. You don't have a chicken. I need multiple. You need three chicken. or four chickens. You, or well, you just I need have friends. Like, <laughs> it's like it's like my wife yeah, and dogs. Like itself. you need to have another dog. No, she wants another dog. Chickens like, we get depressed. Come on. Yeah, you should yeah. get another dog. If you have a little flock out in the backyard, you'd never pay for eggs again. And then quarterly, you could have one less chicken. What do you do with them in the winter? You got to build a coop. Yeah, you got to build a coop. Heat a coop. They'll live. Yeah, they'll live and they'll keep laying eggs. Keep those roosters at bay, though. Yeah. You just gotta, sounds, it just depends how many eggs per day you need. This sounds one, you work backwards from the... When I was in Hawaii, yeah, it might be map. the rooster capital of the universe. There's roosters everywhere. <laughs> I watched a rooster chase down a hen. Wow, was that entertaining. That was a lot. It was going. They didn't he care. Like, they were going. Tiger after the master. They were horny as a mop. Strangely easy to masturbate. <laughs> well, <laughs> it took a while. We're watching them. Me, me and uh, me and Wanya's nephew. I were like, this is crazy. They're just running around racing. I'm like, oh, I think they're up to something. And then right in front of traffic. Did you G rate the rooster? Experience? <laughs> and then while I get asked, what the are they rooster? doing? I'm like, oh, they're just wrestling. Ah, how old that eight in traffic. Yes. How old? In traffic, seven, eight, seven. In traffic, they were wrestling. Yeah. Oh, good. That would have been a great time. To Cars are stopped. Him. Everyone's laughing. Oh, no. Can't eat that egg tomorrow. Yeah, you're Nuh-uh. not going to get another opening like that. <laughs> Do not eat that egg tomorrow. Do not eat that egg tomorrow. That's what I said. Seize the day. If you had a Carpe bunch of feral deal. chickens, you could like run around the neighborhood and catch breakfast every morning. Just Literally in Hawaii, you wake up to a rooster going cock a little do. What nice. type of land use does one chicken need nothing like just a four, yard like four, a dog four, run i know that the chicken farms i'm, I'm like we're, a dog we're trying run to Thomas. give them a free range maybe you know, give experience. them give them like 200 square feet six, whoa that's like the size of my kitchen six square feet per chicken is the recommended yeah but go, you want you want you want to be able to say free run yep so 12 don't do a free range operation. Do like the bad chicken farms where they're all stacked 10 high and they it's shit in each other. That's the ones. Do that in your backyard. Stack them. Pump Stack them. Your neighbors just fucking. What do you do? You're walking out with a syringe. Square feet. You're walking out with a syringe every morning to give them steroids. How much does it cost to get a chicken? <laughs> Could you, could you maybe just go to a Here farm and ask for one? Here you go. There's what, someone. What's that dot org say about that? There's somebody on Kijiji right now selling chickens up it. Yeah, I was listening to say there's a handful of people listening to this podcast right now who do think we're idiots. No, I know a lot about chickens. Come on. I, a buddy of mine, uh, his neighbor has chickens and they're away and he is in chicken town? sitting in St. Albert. <laughs> you can have a chicken in your backyard. You can have Albert. chickens here. You can live off the land. You can have an urban yeah. bee farm. You can have chickens. You can have how obviously many chickens, how many chickens can you have in Edmonton? I think there's a head count. Hang on. So I got a couple of questions I got to get through. So one chicken Chalmers, you can get estimated cost, of course, $50 per bird. Oh, buddy. You're making That's that back in a month. 365 eggs. Kijiji's got Divide 20, that by 12, 20 bucks. 30, 30 dozen eggs. You're getting the good ones. These are free range. That's 240 <laughs> This bucks. reminds me of the guy, the angel fish in Moose Jaw. So <laughs> we're walking down the street, me and the mayor of Moose Jaw, and he listens. And his neighbor drives up to his house with this huge fish tank in the back of his truck. 
and goes, Hey, can you guys help me load this in? I'm like, yeah, of course. We're in Moose Jaw. So I'm helping this guy load his fish tank in. And he broke down for me, his angel fish operation that he had going in his garage, which I saw it was going so well. He was getting a second tank. Chalmers. I got the answer. I want in to your backyard. According to the bylaws for the city of Edmonton, you are allowed to have no fewer than three hens, but no more than six. So you need so you to have, have least, to have three. You have to have three. So six for your family is probably the right number. Cause you get six eggs a day, dude. You, so here's the other thing. You know how you, they may like you look at as the gardener, I see peas. I thought there was just peas. Well, there is not. There's no. homesteader peas. There's millionaire peas. Snap there's peas. like snap peas. There's all different. Th- there's different types of chickens. How do I know which one? There's chance chant tell sir chicks. Oh, uh, those there's are a bar pain in the ass. banter well, chicks. Well, do your research. Well, listen to this. Like? Listen Can to I hear the 20? end of the angel fish yeah, story? Yeah, twenty listen, bucks a piece. Sorry. Listen to you want to make money or you want to have eggs? Mm, both a little bit. You can sell the eggs. Call them A. Call them B. Hey, you he has, Collingwood Farmers Market is going to open right away. Chalmers Chicken Stand right there. Some fresh eggs. You know what? Kids should stop doing lemonade stands. They should have egg stands because I would go and buy a half that dozen. That is eggs. actually very smart. Yeah. Yep. They should raise the chicken. Is the egg they should the learn one soon. That's very product smart. that you don't know the quality of it? And if you find it out, then you've ruined it? You don't know what it's like inside <laughs> unless you crack it. What if it's, it's called sh- candling, Chalmers. Search up egg candling. What's that mean? You hold it up to a light and you can see. Oh, my God. Okay, listen to the this. process. Yeah, angel fish. This guy had one pair of angel fish. Every two weeks, it would give birth to 200 eggs. Hmm. Each live angel fish at maturity is worth seventeen dollars to a pet. So, how many of the two hundred eggs become? So it depended on the some. The di- they eat each other. It goes crazy. Some yeah. are born. Blah, blah blah blah. But he's like, every two weeks you get angel fish. It's full, and then he scoops them all out and sells them to ships them live to pet stores Never all around. Never been to somebody's house that has an angel fish. I can't and imagine the doubling the is. operation because it was going so well. So I saw it with my own eyes. You could sit here and <laughs> pluck fucking eggs one at a time till your eyes bleed or you could sell four <laughs> angel fish and go to the grocery store. So like what you should boss. do is you should think like like how, what Big Farm does to farmers where they consolidate land. You should consolidate backyards and their chicken head count. Give everybody have five chickens oh, and you tie shit. up 10 50 backyards at six chickens. You're thinking, thinking like a eggs. Rockefeller. I'm thinking about like big eggs. Thanks. And pick them up every morning like you, like the garbage man. You got your egg guy who comes and picks up all the I eggs. I just pick them up on the when on my perimeter search. Oh, you know what you should do and then and then but on the pickup you should be their milk delivery man and deliver the milk. Hit them on both ends. That. Hit them on both ends. Why yeah. did milk delivery stop? It's coming back. Hold up for real Glass well, in, in, in England. It's coming back. Yeah. Oh, oh. Wow. oh. but well, but you know, Let's it starts there and it comes stop? here. Yeah. Yeah. Liam's very excited. Like, like spice girls. Yep. Why? Why did they stop? <laughs> I wonder just too expensive to have the delivery men work at the day. Yeah. Couldn't because now, you know, big grocery stepped in and said, Hey, the modern milk get it for man. half the price here, the modern milkman. DoorDash. And for right now, if you need to get your milk through DoorDash, 25% off zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you use the promo code nation 25, you can even use the double dash feature in this instance. There's one spot that sells your milk, a different spot that you really want cookies from. Boom. Double dash, no extra delivery fees. And then I can stop at Chalmers farm to get a six or of eggs. Here's how you do it in 2024. You have a giant beehive in your backyard. You have the maximum amount of chickens and you run an off grid <laughs> grocery store in yes. your driveway. <laughs> you have two items garden. for sale. It's called yeah, yeah, backyard foods, honey and eggs. Let me ask you a question though. If you're getting into gardening, are you thinking of potentially doing a little uh, greenhouse in your backyard? No. So I have garden. Well, that's bo- the next I level. Have, then I you have, have 365. Boxes. That's l- so that was the one thing I was concerned about was like in some inclement weather some of the plants because my old man built himself a little greenhouse in his backyard and he's thriving yeah 365 buddy see so last year we didn't plant any plants and we're talking seeds like until may long weekend and i was not harvesting till end of june harvesting early early january or july what would you maybe you'll get two turns if you plot if you plant it right so that's why i I, i'm like i'm germinating two yields in february yeah so i the big haul in last Feb, year. you started germinating. Yeah, I started at end of February. So Dude, this guy's got a vision. Haul, I don't even know who you are. The I just big like haul last that. year, we got we planted two zucchini plants, and we got zucchinis that were enormous, and we had 
tons. Of, we, had, we had to give half of them away that we ever planted. We never. Did How come you never offered me any of your zucchini? You can have as many zucchinis as you want. Um, the one second one was two cucumbers. things in the world I won't eat your M check is zucchini, and the other one's squash. Oh, have you had, have have you had spaghetti squash? It's yeah, spaghetti disgusting. squash. It is mind blowing. Spaghetti oh. squash like changed my mind on the squash game. No, my I'll eat anything. Else. And it's and it's properly labeled. No. You can make spaghetti so you can make spaghetti squash into like pasta and then have it as like yeah, that's, that's what we do like make a nice little ball. It is the pasta. It's the spaghetti. Yeah, it is mind blowing. It's pretty my good. My old man grows those and so every now and then he'll drop off two at my house. At first I didn't know what to do with them but now I'm all in. I'll I'm come off all a bridge. in on spaghetti squash. <laughs> that's what I do. So to finish my yield. Are you that guy on 53rd for third half over I am. I go across town to do my business. <laughs> then I return home. Tomatoes, cucumbers and peppers were the other You three. grew them all. Yeah, all tomato. of them. Like what level of output? Those are actually delicious. Zucchini was huge. Blech. Tomatoes was huge. Cucumbers was huge. Like you did and the not, peppers were huge. Well, you, you didn't, didn't store fruits, anything though, right? some berries. So berries are tough. Did you Strawberries can? are like, I don't know if you know a strawberry <laughs> plant, how it works, but they don't grow up. They grow out. Yes. And if they sit on the ground for I wouldn't know any that I'm amount not a cabbage of time, patch. they go rotten. So you have to like, the reason they call them strawberries is because you plant them in dirt, but you pack about six inches of straw on top of the dirt so that the strawberries will sit on the straw and not in the dirt and then rot. That was a fascinating tidbit of information. <laughs> that is new information. Yeah. Well, like glad raspberries. However, I planted one bush in my backyard mm. because it's an annual, I think. And it's like free, invasive too. Correct. They don't stop. They don't, they They're are, pricks. it is becoming big. They're it's the like prick of the berry jungle. Yeah. It's becoming very evasive. I haven't had luck with. But do you say no? Though there ever just plus, like graze like a, a bear? Saskatoon berry <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. tree, please. Oh, we made some raspberry jam last year. Yeah, just sit there and graze like a bear out by Did the you bush. Did you join a cult? No, I happened? just honestly, I found something that's kind of relaxing and just like does it and just is like very fulfilling. I don't know why. Uh, hey, man, I, all the power. Every to summer, you. I go and guard with my old man. I find it very real. I like relaxing. walk in the door. I don't say hi to my kids and my wife. I just go and they like go and pet your. I just go look at the. I go look at the little plants. I give them a little squirrel water. On some level, you're like. Supposed to genetically be wired to farm, so it's probably I got am some a provider. level, yeah, of satisfaction <laughs> in my house. The human right. genome like rewards you with dopamine because you're growing successfully, right? No, that will keep you alive through the winter. Drip, drip, drip. <laughs> so I'm so, but I have to expand the garden this year because of all these plants. So I, I have two perfect spots for like two really large planters. I just didn't think I needed them, but now I know I need them. This is how it starts. You want to hear your future? Yep. Step one, get good at gardening. Step two, Done. get a little piece of rural land. Ooh. Step three, bury a bunch of school buses in an underground bunker. Okay. Step four, keep all your urine in jars <laughs> and the decline. <laughs> when do I get to learn how to use guns? Sounds like the branch. Early on, I think. Yeah. Well, you get good at gardening. Then you're like, I don't need society. Then you're like, society is really bad. Yeah. Then it's the surface dwellers are bad. I got to go underground. I feel like this is the first step between you doing like the Henry David Thoreau and you're just going to be in a cabin in the woods at some point. I want to be like, do you remember This Is Us? Do you remember the the show This Is Us? Squirrels. Did you guys ever see This Is Us with the zombies? No. Mm -mm. Oh. This is us is about zombies. <clears throat> Don't they have it's about, oh, sorry. It's I'm about, thinking of it's about the disease show. I was thinking about the one like, with Mandy Moore. What was that yeah, one? You're, like the you're, one. Which one? This is thinking? us. You're thinking of the last of us. Oh, oh yeah. last of us. <laughs> what? You are thinking yeah, of the right yeah, show. Yeah, you are yeah, thinking yeah, of the right show. Yeah, this yeah, sappy this is, zombie. This is us I don't remember Mandy Moore. This is the saddest zombie show. Sorry. Not that show. Last of us. Remember Ron Swanson from The Office or whatever, from Community or whatever show? Parts and Rec, but again, you're batting zero. I am not doing well with this story. There's a game. Gardener. What's Ron Swanson's real name? That guy. I want to uh, be Nick Offerman. I was gonna say Nick Offerman. Oppenheimer. In that show, he's a gardener. He's got a lot of things going on. You're batting. Oh yeah. yeah. I heard there's a scene. Yeah, yeah. Every Anyways, fact is he's wrong. very self-sustaining and he makes and he's and I figured <laughs> that if, if that ever happened in our world, is I a, definitely could make you know, the type of booby traps he has. You, you learn to hunt you'd, though, bro. You'd, you'd thrive if that's the problem. To get that meat. I gotta get I gotta learn how to shoot a gun. After that little run you were just on, I don't think that's why they call them strawberries. I think you're <laughs> no, it's shit. definitely why they call them strawberries. Because <laughs> I, I looked at the plants, I researched how to grow them, and I was like, I'm not buying straw. This is too much. You are becoming a crazy person. So I didn't do it. But that's like we grew year. strawberries, we never had straw. You just when you're, when you're too right comfortable, I guess we didn't you grow them chase that next I didn't high. want to hang. I don't want anything hanging around. I want it to be down low, so it's not like in. It's like making a mess and making my backyard look like you. a garden. I it just you. is going to be off to the side. 
if you hang strawberries, they'll grow over the pot and then you, they'll hang. You're not going to have the space with the chickens and et cetera, et cetera. I'm How many wives those. are you going to have in this scenario? Well, a couple more. I'm going to need them That's to take cool. care of all this stuff. Who's going to take care of all the strawberries? Who's going to harvest all my yield? <laughs> <laughs> Once your crop gets big you know, enough, these, these they kids, let you have a these second kids wife. These days ain't good for shit. Ain't good for nothing. Mm-hmm. All their fucking days off. It's got to be really rewarding one day to just be like, you know what? I'm moving to a plot of land. I'm going to homeschool my kids. I'm going to shoot any intruders. I'm going to grow all my own food. I'm going to have an underground gun cache. This is a good life. You should go get a plot in like an urban farm or whatever. Urban I mean, garden. Do it in your backyard if you got the space. I know, but if he's worried about, you know, if you want to take it next level. The sky's the limit. Like, those, like some of those, like the waiting list is a massive. Because there are people in apartments generally. <laughs> Chalmers has a backyard. Mm. They do. What if a deer got in the backyard? Shoot it. You come here they twice a, a week. Farm. There's that <laughs> plot just over by I've Little seen Brick. Them. You know, you just in and out. You just tend to your veggies. It gets you to come to the podcast more. Yep. Yeah. Because you love your vegetables. You love your vegetables. <laughs> yeah. What is this future timeline? <laughs> the only way to get Chalmers to come to the podcast is to give him a garden plot. Also, they just taste better, Chalmers. So I appreciate your gardening. Why don't you put a garden plot in Little Brick? Where people can come do their own gardening. Not enough space. <laughs> well, I we, thought that one whole side at the front, like you don't really put people there, do you? Yes, people we go should there. garden well, a little bit like, and use the. When output. you walk in, there's the you patio, and then there's the front yard, like where across from like the actual red door, like the one when you first look in. Yeah, people sit there. Oh, they do not. Yeah, I'm, they always did. I haven't been there since we don't do the podcast there anymore. <laughs> oh well, they've always did. Even I didn't when know you that. did the podcast there. Thank you for being so gentle with that one. Oh. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> God. What you could get a little brick, and there's a government program for this, is an indoor like pod farm. You oh. can get grants for this. Those ones that grow upward kind of? Yeah. So like yeah. you'd put it where the back parking lot would be, and it'd be the size roughly of one parking stall, and it's basically a sea container. And then they like measure the output of an in, like a tiny urban farm. Hmm. We could like grow our own lettuce. Interesting. Lettuce. Hard to grow. Anyways. Really? Yeah, I'd probably born people but, with this vegetable. Yeah, I would have my dad, my dad would grow we, lettuce. We have in his not, planter those sizes. We have not had and very much yeah. success yeah. with There's lettuce. We grew lettuce last year in our backyard. It th- yeah. It it takes we, did, a we did touch. get some. We Do you have anything in your backyard? Just the lettuce last year and strawberries. Hmm. Do you have straw down there or no? No, just we have them. In like and how they cut? How they it, come out? Well, we had it in like a taller planter, so it was kind of like again, it'd spill over the sides. They wouldn't go bad as fast. We got to start doing pre-show planning because this bitch <laughs> has been about gardening for twenty-five minutes, and people listening are like twenty-two minutes of just straight gardening. These guys had straight. Uh, well, <laughs> okay. Well, how do you how do you shift gears well, from I wanna, that? Though? I gotta what do you want I want to know about Tyler being a snitch. Okay, so we want to do the snitch story oh, now. Are you, are you on the are you on the the docket for stitches? He's in he's in uh, okay uh, protective custody. The right latest now. on Parking Gate, which is now a police matter. Oh, mm. so I don't know how much more I can say, but it's not like. Really are you under story. investigation? No. Then you so, can say anything you want. Here are the two most recent events since the last time I've talked about this on the podcast. The last time it snowed, so there's van owner and non van owner, right? Okay, who's, who's the first? Whose side are we on? Who's the original? I'm on no one's side. Non van owner is well, the we got a fun side. game. Non van owner is the OG. Yep. Van owner is the new guy. Thought non van owner said you're parking your van too close to my driveway. Yep. And who's Called. wanting to sell van owner? There's an update to that van over. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He moved in like a year ago, renovated it, moved in with his kids, and now he's selling. I'm on that guy's side. I yeah. Well, let's I, see. Let's see what you have so, to say. I think there's an update. During the winter, I was telling you guys about how non-van over was pushing all his snow onto the street so Mm. he couldn't pull his van through. Yeah. So the last time it snowed, non-van owner went and shoveled all his snow and plopped it directly in the middle of his drive, the other guy's driveway. Like didn't even try to make it look accidental. There was a mound of snow in front of non-van owner's driveway. Non-van owner, so pissed, he drives around it on his driveway, leaves it there until it melts. It sat there. So- Flash forward to last Monday. It would have been the day. It's garbage day on our neighborhood on Monday. So non-van owner has a van parked in front of his house. He pulls his garbage cans and puts them right next to the van. Okay, whatever. You're trying to send a message that if you park here, look, you're this is where my bins go, whatever. So the garbage guy, because he's pulled this stunt before, decides, fuck that. I'm not picking up your garbage today, bro. Ooh. So non-van owner doesn't get his garbage picked up. What does he do? drags his bins and knocks over his garbage bin in front of the other guy's garbage house. Garbage on his lawn? Yeah, there's just garbage and Let's his garbage bins all over his lawn. Hand there you go. Down. Pass that down. Can you feel the tension? Let me see that. Yeah. Okay. Is, 
Is he putting his garbage cans in front of his own house? Yeah, but the guy's but van's van in front owner, of his own house. This might have just owner, blown so over. Van owner is parking in front of non-van owner's house? Yep. Could that just have blown over? But he's only- I'm not on van owner's side Okay, wait, 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 wait. But he's only parking there because non-van owner originally called by law because when van owner was parking in front of his own house, he said, you're too close to my driveway. He wasn't. He was just being a dick. So, so that's how it started. It so the retaliation is, okay, you say I'm parking too close to your driveway when I'm in front of my own house? Park it in front okay. of your house then. Okay. And there is, there's no rules. <laughs> there's saying, no rules to park in front of somebody else's house. You yep. need It's common courtesy. Is, but common courtesy went out the window when you started screaming at someone Saturday at 9 a.m. about how close his van is to his driveway. And it wasn't that close. Okay. So you're on van owner's side. I'm on nobody's Having side. Having inspected though. that photo, though, it's lot sounds a lot worse. You made it out to be. Okay, but he took his bins. They were in front of his own house. He moved them in front of the other dude's house for no other reason than to be like, look, my shit didn't get picked up. And I they see. stayed there for three days. I see. I see. Mm. So that's why it looks bad. So anyways, they stay there three days. Thursday comes around. I'm sitting on the couch and watching Big Brother Canada, which we can talk about later. So good. So good. Um, and a cop pulls up and parks in front of my house. SWAT team? Just one cop. I'm like, oh boy, what's going on here? So me being the nosy neighbor I am. Got it. I got a window open. I'm trying to listen out because he went across the street and was talking to non-van owner Uh who presumably called him there. Well, yes, it would have to be. Yeah. So they're talking, they're talking, they're talking. And then I see the cop goes to walk next door, but he bypasses van owner's house and goes to the next neighbor. So he's obviously going around. Trying to build a case. Mm -hmm. Trying to build a case. Sleuthing. No one picks up that door. That neighbor's not going to snitch. The dogs were going nuts in the window. No one came to the door to talk to the cop. Then he comes up my door. That's OG. Cop starts walking walking up to his van. I kind of gave it like a peek out my front window. And I think he kind of knew that I was like watching and staring around because he just looks and just gives me a little wave. And I'm like, oh, hey. And then he walked up. He's like, hey, do you know I'm here? And I was like, parking gate. And he was like, do you want to talk? And I had the biggest grin on my face. I was like, do I ever? You got to snitch with oh. the whole, oh, you rat bastard. And I yeah, showed, him every, showed him every picture I had. Don't talk to police. Cover, every, cover. I've been building my own case. I got a file. Ghetto boys G code. Don't talk to police. Yeah. And he was, this, this cop was like, dude, you were the exact person I've been looking for. And I spilled the beans on everything. And this so cop was what, like, so what side do you figure so, you were swaying it towards? So, the officer said, because he's only obviously talked to non-van owner so far. Yeah. yeah. And he said, we've gotten multiple calls from both of these guys. These are like, they're, they're threatening each other at this point. Like it's kind of getting out of hand. Um, and as I was telling him info, he was like, oh, well, this guy wasn't telling me that. Oh yeah. He didn't tell me that either. And he was like, what would you say? 60, 40. And I said, honestly, no 50, 50. I said, these two guys are just antagonizing each other. And neither of them knows how to just squash a beef. Like this is getting ridiculous. I then learn that van owner has had trouble selling his house and he's pulled it off the market. So he's back in for the long haul. All right. And I wonder if it has anything to do with non van owner. Well, how could he ruin his listing? It's like on, that, in, on Step Brothers yeah. when they were dressed like the KKK when the, <laughs> yeah. the realtor were coming yeah, to show the place. Money. This guy can't get out of this that easy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, anyways, I am friends with like one of my neighbors, and the police officer then went over there and I texted him after. Um, and I was like, hey, we what did the cop say? Straight. And he was like, the cop actually said our stories are lined up. And I was like, so we're good with 50, 50 blame. And I was like, yep. And that's what we're sticking to. It's both <laughs> them's fault. Snitch. I was so happy. I want this. I want it to end, but never end. But now I don't want it to end. Cause the content's kind of funny. Someone anymore. might die, but like cool. straight up. One of them has That'd like be a, a good really episode. aggressive dog. And I'm like, he might like sick his dog on the guy Sweet. at some point. That'd How be a really good episode of real life. In that either episode? van owner or non van owner, van owner, zero. Non van owner, only t- only time I've really talked to him is when he was petitioning against the garage that van owner wanted to make, and was successful in that endeavor, which is why he has to park on the fucking street because you didn't let him build a garage. Oh he literally wow! Said he, 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 <laughs> and you think it's fifty? All right, 50? I'm on van owner's yeah, side. That level of this guy is getting fucked with hard. He blocked his garage. Do you think it's fifty? And then and then is now shitting on him for parking on the street. This yeah. is the worst thing because <laughs> van owner, you don't. Get to like, when you look at a house, you don't go and meet the neighbors, right? So you put down the biggest purchase of your life and and all of a sudden you- And I wonder why the people sold their house in the first place. Yeah. Those people must have been like, oh God, thank Jesus. Offers 20K under listing. Don't care. 
Done. Crazy, man. Yeah. Uh, they I am said so blessed to have good neighbors. He was going to put a garage in his backyard imagine. that he could access from the alleyway How behind. How is it 50-50 oh. then? Yeah, and I don't they, think and they said uh, the reason they got it thrown out, his building plans, is because they said the roof is going to go higher than the roof of his house and it will create an eyesore. And he told me, quote, ruin the neighborhood. <laughs> I was like, buddy, you have in the winter. You is, put there foil other, is there any other? Is there any? Oh wow! Yeah. Any other uh, uh, alleyway garages? Uh, there's one on the first house. The I don't street. get it. Yep. The city is just so the been everything set. to do with. Just shows me a city of Saint Albert has and, no and secondary suites, spa. but Saint Albert's like not allowing you to build a because it might be an eyesore. Well, because they That's got incredibly because they got five other signatures. I did not sign. They, the neighbor came to the door one day while I was here. One van owner have five people that He's threatening. agree you with You still haven't guy. answered He's, my threatening dude. question. How can you say a guy who was disallowed a garage is equally culpable yeah, as the guy next door? Yes. You're fucked. He, He's been double you stitched. You're a real fence sitter you cannot here. Trust you cannot trust the testimony. Yeah, he tried he to park in a garage, the denied goal. the garage, then tried to park in front of his house like a normal person, and he's being fought and denied that. I'm surprised he's not parking on his front fucking doorstep. Here's why I don't give him all the credit. <laughs> he has three vehicles. He's got his SUV, his work van, and his kid has a vehicle, little Audi. Okay. He parks... His SUV in his garage. The kid parks on the street. I thought he doesn't have a garage. He has a front garage with that single car. Oh, okay. He, he wanted two to, garages. He wanted to build a double car in How the back. How rich are you to have two garage neighborhoods? Um, but when his van is on the street and his kid's on the street, no one's on the driveway. So he could park his van on the driveway. But then and how do you get the car out of the garage? I know. But then I did later learn that it is technically against bylaw, but I'm not telling the non-van over to this. Oh, that's where you don't switch? Oh, he knows. No, he doesn't know this. And mm. this may have been, I may have had a What's source. What's against the bylaw? He runs his own company. So he's technically not allowed to park a, his own commercial vehicle on city street. That is against bylaw in St. Albert. But- me and maybe someone else, my source, are withholding that information from non-van owner. <laughs> For what leverage? <laughs> I don't know. Just fuck him. He's kind of a dick. <sighs> you never talk to him. I still don't like him. I don't like either of them. That's my point. All right. Because they're ruining the neighborhood. If I, knew that my, the market. if I knew that my neighbor had snitched on me to the degree that you did, you would have a second beef going on your street now. I, made sure I my would have legitimately watched that cop. If I was van owner, I would have watched that police officer go to talk to you people. Well, you do and then I would have come excited. out there and I would have asked, hey, what did he say to you? I would have been curious. But I also would have had a little bit more of a rapport with you by now. I've met everybody around me. Like, yeah, my neighborhood is not like that. When the people who sold us our house wrote us our letter being like, welcome to your new home. Like, here's what you need to know. Don't talk to the neighbor. It was literally like your neighbors on one side are so-and-so and so-and-so you won't talk to them. And I don't. And I was like, your neighbors on the other side are so-and-so and so-and-so they'll take some getting used to. <laughs> and it's like, that's a pretty damning thing to this write in a letter. A red flag neighborhood all over. Wow, the place. Don't. So the only neighbor I like has now bought a house out in the country and is moving this summer. Yeah, because he grid. needed to get the so hell out of the city. I have, I have no one. Grow his own chickens. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You Sorry. should move. No? That's the answer. Tom. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think this sounds like something that will never get resolved. No. As I'm saying, someone's going to die first. That's that's gonna be a great. So be natural causes, happens, or I, actually, I don't want to. I don't want to throw the universe. Never mind. Don't murder. Say that. Don't say that shit, Jay. Yeah, we all need alibis now. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, I the cop was like, "Can I take all this info down? Can I have your name?" I was like, "Yeah, man." I was like, I want a resolution here. Secretly, I kind of don't. But you, what do you, you're like inconvenienced by this? You're loving this. Why do you want a resolution? This is the greatest do, thing that happened I, to you. I don't like conflict. It makes me uncomfortable. Somebody's going to hear this, and then soon somebody's going to start parking in front of Tyler. Yeah, house. then don't snitch on people if you don't want conflict. If you're, it, you're, you, your neighbor <laughs> sells their house. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> They're the new people move in. They start parking a car in front of your house. Do you go over and have a conversation with them, saying, "Hey, like, well, why?" First, let me understand why you're parking in front of my house. Yeah, like if that guy was parking his white van in front of my house every day, every night, I'd be a little bit like, hey, man, like, can we do something about this? But then I also wouldn't have an issue in the first place when he was on his driveway and be like, dude, you're too close to my driveway with hell. I'd just be like, okay, this is life. Like, whatever. The other thing, too, is there is a longstanding history back to when before I moved there about my neighbor and non van owner freaking out about parking on the boulevard to the point where. If someone comes over and is visiting my house, if they park on the front of my house that is more on my neighbor's side, 
He will pull his truck off the driveway for no reason other than to park it an inch away from your bumper. Like he sends messages. One time, but this is a different neighbor than the two that are. Feeding. This is the guy who lives this right next to me. Yeah. Aggressive wow. neighborhood. Yeah, you fit in perfectly, Snitch. Buddy, I'm across. Buddy lives across the street from me. Works for Star Mechanical. Shout out Star Mechanical. There's one day he had to bring an extra work truck home, so he had two work trucks in front. And this guy came out and yelled at him. This isn't a fucking parking lot. Like you don't get it. It was in front of his own house. He parked two vehicles. Hey man, I'm just trying to just trying to make a living here. Just trying to like. No, it was like just, he got scolded. This isn't a parking lot. This is a neighborhood. What are you doing? So they have this weird thing where they think they own the boulevard and they don't. So there's something about being neighborly, but then there's also the angle of like, don't be a dick. The people who live next to me, I never talked to when their son comes over. And I think he like works a week on week off. His car will be parked there for a week. It's in front of my house. I don't give a shit because I know it's going to go away right away. And I'm not going to go like yell at someone over where they're parking. Well, their it sounds car. Like also, you, you don't own the public street. showing weakness around public everyone street. in the neighborhood. Anyways, that's parking gate update. It's ridiculous. Every side's ridiculous. Yep. It is. Nobody has any sense. Nobody no. has any sense of. Hey, I'm with. I'm with Van Guy. I. I mean, I am too. I am too. If I had to, I'm pick with a Van side, Guy yeah. the minute he got the garage thrown. Got up. the garage thrown out. Yeah, I am immediately on Van Guy's side because, like, this is my property. Like, I was going to really spe- spend my own money to fix this I, issue. Here's my thing: I have built things for people that have had to go to the city due to a variance that we needed based on a complaint with the plan yeah. for the next door neighbors. And I'm going to say that like the five times it's happened, the people are just unhinged in a way. They and it's just, like the most minor thing that has no impact on them. Yeah. None. These people wanted to put a covering. This is the, this is the most recent, a big, a big covering on their backyard deck. They're in a ravine. Their house is so far back in that ravine that the people next to them can't even really see. And like, they fought it. Pass it. They just, they, and they sold their house because of it. The people next door after it was built and they lost, they sold their house. Like I, it's just, it's some people just, people go, just can't ignore anything. Anymore, I know. Right? It's like, it's, it, it's like a little piece of power or something that they have. Right. And they got to flex it. Mm. I can't wait. I'll be the same way. Just kidding. <laughs> Don't. All right. I have something else I wanted to get to. And we had a conversation before we started recording that I want to get to. But first, we're going to step aside for a quick break. <clears throat> Back half of the pod brought to you by. Oh, this is great. Are you looking for more privacy from your neighbors? <laughs> Duraguard. <laughs> Duraguard Fence Limited. If you're looking for a trusted professional fence company in Alberta that can do it all, count on Duraguard Fence. For 37 years, they've been offering manufacturing, installing, and repair services, as well as a whole range of do it yourself solutions. Duraguard Fence, your one stop shop for over 37 years. Chain link, wood, vinyl, ornamental fencing? Sure. Do you want to make your new chicken coop look better? Then you could do by yourself. Durgard fencing. Well, you, you want to make sure you get a fence that gets made that doesn't get you in trouble with your neighbor. Durgard. They're pros. So I need to get my fence fixed and uh, it's on the yes. side. It's so bad. It's on the f- side of the neighbors I never talked to. So I've lived there for two years, never spoken to the guy once. Amber's talked to his wife once. Um, I need to now go. go. The building of a Fine. fence is the ultimate test in yes. how much you and your neighbors so are you going to ask to go 50 50? Well, okay. So here's the, this is where I'd like some advice from people older than me. This I, podcast is so boring. I can give you every, I've, I've I dealt, think this is what the people want. Gardening, one fighting I, with your neighbor. I've dealt with so many people and building okay. fences. I can tell you exactly what you need to do. Okay. So shared fence. Yep. But their garage like blocks their view of 90% of the fence. And then the back little bit, or I shouldn't say 90 back 50% of the fence. Then there's like 25% at the back in their yard, but they never go in their yard. And then there's the front 25 that they would kind of see. And then there is a gate, but that gate's on my property. So I'm on the hook for the gate. How should we split the fence? What should my offer be? I was going to say, hey, will you guys cover a third of this project? No, they should. It's half and half. Anything that sits on the property line, which is another yeah. big key. You are going to have to get your plot plan, their plot plan. You have to make sure that fence is on the property line, meaning you will have to have a surveying company come out and stake it, show you exactly where it is. You can do it yourself if mm-hmm. you if you. No, what you look like. at the big at the front and the back of every single yard. Guy grows one pot of peas, yeah. and now he thinks he can do anything. At the very front and the very back corner of everybody's lot, if you dig oh, down far pin. enough, you will find a pin, 
And usually uh, it will I have a mine. ribbon around it. What? And if yes, and it defines the like property. A prize? And it is deep. It's yeah. probably grown over. Yeah. You're gonna have to use a metal detector. detector yeah. And and then, then dig down. It's a fucking long pin. So like even if you dig out the top of it, you ain't moving it. It is in there for good. You then put a stake on one side, stake on the other side, and you run a line. That's the property line. There is no. Couldn't we just? Couldn't we it. just agree to put the new fence where you the can. old fence is? So yes, you can, as long as you agree. Yeah. That anything that touches your property and my property, regardless if you can see it, fences aren't meant aren't there to be seen. They're not like people build fences all different types of ways. They're there for a reason. They are to create privacy. Mm -hmm. They are to create a structure of the continuous field around your property, right? To contain. Yeah. That's what, what it's there for. The ghosts in the Ghostbusters. The dog trap? you might have. Oh. Just, it's a privacy thing, but it's not, it doesn't matter if they can't see it from their house. It doesn't yeah. mean that you would build up to it and then build the rest if you had to pay for it. So 50, 50, man, that's it. Right. That's the deal. That's the deal. It Even has, the gate that's on my side. No, the gate, if that's on your Gates, property, it's me. that's on your side of the property. Even line, though it's attached anything to the they do on their side of the property line, maybe I can pull a theirs. If it goes right down the center and it separates two Worth properties, that is a 50, so 50. My thing. Cause again, they don't see the fence as much as I do. What if they say no? So this is what the fence looks like right now. It doesn't need to be replaced. Oh my God. <laughs> that looks great. It's like warped it's and like it's warped. Steve Let me add this. Semi's teeth. It's warped because this is the one time Amber went and talked to, to the neighbor's wife for the first year we lived there. They had old tires, a ladder leaned up against it to the point where it was almost falling okay, so over. That's what you, so, so you have like, you have, I know, but, you have what two options. but what if there's like, no, Oh, we don't want to do that. And you have no. two options. Okay. 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 If they, is have, there, is if there they a say, rule that it has to be 50, 50? No, it, no, it's a neighborly. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I was just well, curious. Right, I don't, right. I don't no, know. No, yeah, no, it's, if their argument is, well, we can't see that, we don't care. Say, the actions you've made in the past, unfortunately, have created yeah. this fence to become unusable now. Yeah. And this fence is not acting in the manner that it is supposed to be acting at, and therefore, we have to fix it. Yeah. Okay? So, that's when you say... You know, if, if that's when you hope they're going to say yes, 50, 50, yes, they understand what they've done to the fence. They understand that just anybody's property, when people come to sell it or, or you go to reason, a good fence is a absolute necessity, yeah. right? I, when I looked at my yard, I looked at the one side of the fence and I went, I'm going to have to replace that, counted the number of lengths. And I knew that it was going to be uh, X amount of dollars. Yeah. And I knew that was a thing, right? But the other two fences were great, and that was good, right? Do you think Chalmers is going to do a perimeter check with a one-side fence problem? Mm -hmm. It'd drive him crazy. Yeah. If they say no, you really, there's not much you can do. I can't, like, go to the city and be like, look, this is, like, a, the fence is, and they have a big dog, too. Like, sometimes the, the, really dog, the fence is fine. Sometimes the fence, or the dog puts his whole upper body through the fence and barks at me while I'm doing yard work. That's, a, that's another leg to stand on for you, to be like, look, I don't, look, your dog, it's nice and everything, but, like, this fence is not acting as a fence right now. Yeah. I'm going to have shield. kids. We're getting engaged. I'm going to have kids, potentially a dog soon. Mm -hmm. I can't have your dog able to penetrate through this fence. And potentially penetrate my dog. Exactly. Can't have that. You just, I <laughs> well, mean, you can sell the it, puppies. That's the thing with neighbors. Like it has to start out with real uh, like understanding business. and, 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 and a, a give and take there. Right. Yeah. If I were you. How comfortable you are to have that conversation. I've never spoken to the guy. So we'll find out next time I see him. Bring a beer uh, over. Here's what you should do. It's old. Uh, yeah, give exactly. him a six pack. Then a whiskey. If you go to him. We're going to drink this. The and hammer this idea out. of a fence. Yeah. And he says, yeah, I think we could do that. You then have to go back to him with a quote for the fence. Yeah. In that amount of time, he has the amount of time to think about it, to come up with reasons why he shouldn't, to, to, to just yeah. have a quote, get a quote, have the quote ready. Approach oh, do him it first. With the, with the quote, yeah. the, the plan, make this seem so easy that you've done all this work that it is hard for him to say no, because now all it is is just money. Because the real thing is, is when the fence gets done, those posts need to get pulled out. That's going to take a bobcat or a ton of digging. Well, you can say to him, I have good access. I don't mind if my grass gets a little bit ruined. Your grass will stay in good shape. We can access it. We can pull these posts from my side. The fence behind your garage, clearly we can't get to it from yours. So it just makes more sense to do it all from my side. 
and say, you know, so even it's though a, we're splitting the cost, huge I gift. am giving up this one concession. Yeah. It's a big and one. You're going to get a lovely fence out of the whole thing. That's yeah. going to help with the resale value go of link. your house. Mm-hmm. That's chain link. You want chain link? I think I'm going chain link. I, I, thought, yeah, I, thought, chain I thought I thought you didn't want the dog to yeah. see. You, be well, you, to put, see the, you put the slats in. Oh. Like the other side of my yard is chain link with the slats in. You can't Chalmers see Chalmers is disgusting. You want me to go wood? I go wood. What's, what do you got against chain link? Yeah, got to go wood. What do you got oh, against I chain link? I have one part of my yard right now that's chain link and two sides that aren't. Chain Sounds link like- fence is incredibly unprivate. Those the slats, plastic slats break all the time. Mine have never broken in two years. <laughs> what are you doing running into them like Do you're you a, a pro kid who wrestler? Kicks soccer balls? No. Not yet, you will. but soon. Do you have a child who might play back there? No. Nope. them sticking their hand through the fence and getting it bit off by this rabid dog? Bit off. Put the clean. slats in. The slats. Okay, maybe I'll do wood. Grow up. <laughs> You, you don't lie. do a chain link fence and you don't go vinyl because only people with way too much money go with a vinyl plastic fence. I'll go vinyl then. No, that's, it's a very luxury item to have a vinyl fence. They don't warp. What wood does is it warps. I, I just had to repaint my fence and it, you know, it's, yeah. it's a task, but now it looks great. It got, you have to go right. wood and it can be simple. Make sure you put the things, the, the cross braces, unless you go with a stagger, uh, put the cross braces on your side all the way or do it one and one obstacle so that your kids can climb it and jump over and get their balls and jump back really quickly <laughs> because they don't want to go all the way around. That's something to think about. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Maybe um, some gargoyles on top too. Good was, luck. They make those new like solar lights. You can screw into the top Ooh, of the fence cool. posts yeah, that's nice. and light all the way around. There's little puck lights. They're like, and they, and they, they, you screw them to the top and they've got a solar panel on the top and then they hang down over and they're a light. And cool. it's beautiful. Yep. I have one other personal situation I want to run past everyone. <laughs> this but, this one, but this one's hockey related. Pregnancy I was going to say, we're just going on the playoffs, right? So <laughs> I love it. I'm not going to be here on Thursday because mm. I'm down in Arizona and I got tickets to what will now be the last ever game at Are Mullet Arena. Are you doing Arena. what? Ooh, exciting. I have a friend who's da- going down okay. for that game. He can sell the tickets for He all. just sold his tickets 10 to 1 what he paid for them. Whoa. So I paid, I paid 200 bucks a pop. I can right now get twelve hundred to pop for them. That's what the recently sold on StubHub says, and we have four tickets. So do me and my. Who are they playing? The Oilers. Oilers. Oh, I did not know that. The Oilers yeah. play I the last game was... in in Coyotes history. This is the last home game tonight. Yeah, Oilers, the Oilers home game. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I just I overheard and I thought this was the last regular season. So, game. oh man, forty eight hundred bucks. Or Oilers Goats at so Mullet Arena. 800, you paid 400. Yeah. It's a free trip no, to Scottsdale. I don't even know how this is a conversation. Are you in the same hotel? Yeah. Nice. Staying the same. My parents are already there, actually. You could make $4,000. You've yeah. already been US. to Mullet Arena once. But my, my dad hasn't, and he kind of wants to go. Amber's like, I would like to go. The thing for me is I could you also- You got a fence to pay for. I could just go get a press pass. <laughs> And so I you go, go by yourself. Other, you, you leave the other three at home. So you want to sell one ticket, or you're talking about maybe saying, "Mom, you don't like hockey. You chill. Go in a Waymo." And uh, mom, mom could not care less about this hockey game. So it's like, do I one sell? Ticket sold. Do Ooh, I sell, sell my ticket and my mom's ticket? Do we make yes. twenty four hundred bucks? Yes. Yes. Hundred percent. And then you get her. A, you get her. A if nice your mom's like Pinot Gris, yeah. so she if can your mom, watch it. If your mom like, rather just go do something outside of that game, yes. It's a, like you got a fence to pay for. I do. That is that is probably your half of your fence cost, right? Fence what five grand? Or is that depends a, how long it is? So, I mean, that's pretty pretty realistic. I mean, depending on how long it is. Free fence. Free fence. Free fence, and I just have to convince my mom not to go to something she doesn't want to go to. That is, and I have to get a press pass, and then Amber can sit with my dad. Perfect. I should probably pretty smart. I think. Well, you, you already know, know the you answer. know the mullet. You can just like just be in the standing room together. Yeah, yeah. Like that's the beauty of it. That's the move. Will there be a lot of press passes available for their last game ever? Won't national press stampede in? Uh, well, I don't think so. I think it was the on brand stuff. of DFO can get you into any building. That too. Really? I have a pretty good. It's not us into our own. Yeah. yeah, it's not our own. I see. Well, DFO can get us in that in, in the building. Yeah. If I email and say I'm Tyler from DFO, can I have a press pass? I get in. Tyler from Oilers Nation, no email back. Tough break. <laughs> That's life. Yeah, sell those tickets, Tyler. Yeah, should probably because then out. you because then you say can say you did. Yeah, and you made right, that like money. you still got to go to the game. Like, yeah, and I went and I had two extra tickets and I flipped them. 
Think about yeah. Taco Bell Cantina. Oh, all the Taco Bell Think about Cantina. all the, uh, the whole menu. reinforcements for the courtyard pool party. Just, just so that you can go home and you can have an idea of what you're looking at. A fence per foot of a nice wood built mm-hmm. fence. You're talking between 40 and $50 a foot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm so and a hundred feet of fence would be five, 500 or $5,000. Yeah. I need 64 feet. Or, yeah. Plus a gate. Yeah. So you're good. I could do no. So gate. you sell those tickets and you got your fence. There's your fence. Yeah. Oh, what if the guy goes 50, 50, but I just go, I just look back at the experience that I have with my family there. Pretty fun. <laughs> this is pretty good, man. But everyone's it's going, but moms. I know. But mom might need to I see it. I also had kids. I mean, I was I was with my kids. I was oh, with my parents. I was with my wife. Is, and then a whole bunch of nation that's listeners. That's great. It is you know, top three NHL yeah. experiences I've ever had. I, I really, and on, I'm so glad we did it because we it is the exact reason why you had to go do it. At, because it would it wasn't going to happen again. And sure as shit. At the least, at the very least. You sell your ticket, get a press pass. You let them three go. You take that press pass. And you remember how the seating was? Yeah. We all just moved around. Just, I mean, it you was like, just cram you right just in. Cram, you could literally just go buy a beer and go and stand with them. And I don't think anybody's going to care. No. But it'll be tougher to sell a single seat versus. I'm also curious, like, just what are they going to do during that game? You know, like, hey, Coyotes fans, thanks. Well, so the other side of it, too, is. Am I a dick for showing up in an Oilers jersey to the last ever game? No, they're trying to make it a whiteout. They're trying to make yeah. it a whiteout. I, I would oblige to that request. Wear a white jersey. White Oilers jersey. Yeah, wear a white Oilers jersey. Yeah. yeah, I guess you don't want to stand out that hard, hey? Yeah, just wear yeah. a white Oilers jersey. It's fine. So I just kind of feel by the whiteout. I kind of feel like a bit of a dick being like, See, go Oilers last game for the That's Coats. what some of your neighbors could have is the sense. You understand that it's a whiteout. You have the respect for the hockey and for Phoenix, but you're still going to wear your Oilers jersey. You are giving and taking. Yep. Yeah. Giveth and taketh. Ouch. You've hit that your head on that. I know. Times, what hey? the hell? I think the plan writes itself, Tyler. White over this jersey. You know you got one. So the last two games, do we have two games after the season or three? Three. Three tonight. Tonight and then, and then Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. Who before Phoenix? Gotta be LA or somebody. San Jose right. tonight. Arizona, then Colorado. Yep. Back to back on the road. Colorado. So Connor. in a week from now, we're gonna be drunk every second night. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Connor's back in tonight. Connor's back. Connor's back. Thank God. One game we could do. Three games. Yeah, oh, I gotta yeah, put yeah. I gotta put some money on him. He's gonna did Cooch Cooch didn't hit his hundred assists nope. today. And what does McDavid need? One one. one. Oh Are shit. We gonna do a squad bet? Oh do well, I oh, wanna, yeah, let's McDavid do. one assist is what? Minus four minus, thousand. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, well, you gotta do a little more fun than that. Uh what if you do minus on. one and a half? Come on. Connor. What did we think about the game against Vancouver? I thought that boring. the yeah, it was terribly boring. Mm-hmm. I thought the Kane Oilers actually well. controlled most of the play. They just couldn't score. Kane had that Cassian night where he was on the verge of like winning it on the ice in the positive way or being stupid enough to lose it while by going to the penalty box too much. I was more annoyed. Oilers with Friday, puck line and Connor two points is minus one ten. That is no fun. <laughs> That's not a lot of fun. That Kinda is very like, little fun. Let me do a little Masters recap. Not a lot of fun. Well, there was Sundays, a window. Yeah. There was a window of fun. There was like those five holes. The very beginning of the day on Sunday. Up until 12, up yeah. until 11. Yeah. But when Tiger was playing that amateur. He's like, I can't believe it. I was in college two weeks ago. Here I am. That was kind of cool, man. I got to admit, like to be the only amateur that super cool. makes through the field, you know, you're going to be sitting in Butler cabin. You get to your Sunday pairing is with Tiger. That's wild. Man. And then you beat him. He's an active <laughs> college player. Yeah. And then you beat him. And then shit. you beat him. I don't watch much golf, but I watched most of yesterday. It must've felt so great for Scotty Scheffler as he was walking up 18, knowing it's his, unless something crazy catastrophic would have happened. <laughs> but man, what a feeling that must've been. Everybody My favorite things about him? the weekend are all the memes that were putting pictures of his wife from the masters, like from last year in the masters when she was in her, yeah, in her way and saying, this is the only person that can, def- def- that can stop Scotty Scheffler today because notoriously she's pregnant. Her due date was like yesterday. Ah. And so he had stood true to him saying that no matter what, mm-hmm. if he, if she went, if she went into labor, he was going to leave. Unless he teed off on the first hole. I said that to my wife kind of because she he loves. Teed off on the, oh. If he teed off on the first hole on Sunday, he was most he likely going to end the round. that round. He wasn't going to leave gotcha. on like 10. Okay. So he said that. But so I said that to my wife on Saturday. I'm like, 
what a guy. Hey, like this is cause she, lo- she can really get invested if I tell her stories. So this was one of the stories I wanted to tell her. And her first reaction was, well, if I was her, I just wouldn't tell him. Like he's about to win a master's and like, could you imagine? Like, but, but that's, that's I what know, she but, said. I'm like, I know, but he, he, wouldn't? Like, well, he obviously but wanted, he wanted to be there. Well, of course. I mean, uh, but like if it was a matter of I'm having this baby on master Sunday and you're not going to be here. Cause I found out Saturday morning and I didn't tell you that's one thing. But like if she went into labor on like Sunday morning, my wife's like, I wouldn't tell, I wouldn't say anything. I would just let him go win the tournament. She'd just be headstrong and be like, you know what? I'll just do 14 hours of labor and yeah. wait through this form. My second thing, there's note gate is happening. Tiger Woods apparently passed the amateur a note on the 13th hole, which is highly illegal. Amateur guy? Why yeah, is that illegal? Why? why is it illegal? Well, I don't Casey was giving why. him tips. I guess it's a, a so like, What is that going to do? I don't know. What Tiger Woods can say? tell me literally like, anything. It won't make me I better don't know. golf. Maybe, maybe... I don't know if when the last time if you guys saw when Tiger Woods handed Justin Thomas a little tiny tampon after yeah. he outdrove him and it was kind of like a whole big thing. Yeah. Uh, maybe that maybe he just wrote on the piece of paper, this is a I got in trouble. Don't do the tampon, tampon Joe. Read yeah, this note. Here read this note. But this is a tampon. You're a bum. <laughs> You're says. a bum. Uh, Avoid Perkins. <laughs> That's I was I pushing for the for, for Max Homa. Big time, really like him. Uh, Max is a solid yeah. golfer. Ludwig he just he got yeah. Obear oh. is going to win a lot of a golf tournaments. Ludwig is legit. I think I really wanted more to happen for Vern Lundquist's last Masters call. I wanted him to call something amazing because he has some of the most amazing calls in your life. Have you ever seen such a thing? Do you know what that is? Sounds like Vern Lundquist. When Tiger Woods hits yep. that chip and it rolls way back. And then goosebumps. drops in the end. And they did a couple was, things yeah. on Vern and I just. $200 like, million dollars of earned media for Nike. Yeah. Oh man. And so, but, but it was just really, really, really. What's the word when it goes up? Anticlimactic. Anticlimactic. All I can think about is you, the earned media for Nike, just anybody walking down the link or whatever Nike logo up front on the hat, on the back, like just that's everywhere. Yeah. He's got Nike everywhere. Yeah. They, they started putting it on the back too. I'm like, that's so funny. That's not on the shirts you get in the store. I actually liked, sense, uh, who was it? Was it Homa? One of them? Uh, oh no, it might've been Morikawa, his scorecard holder, how he puts it as a KPMG logo, like sticking out. So oh, I yeah. see his butt. I'm like that's well thought out. That's good execution. That's great execution. Tiger's new logo on his new gear looks weird. I don't like it at all. It's like an Arcteryx logo. It's weird. I don't like it at all. I just felt bad for him. Like when it was cold and he had to play 24 holes on Saturday, he just looked. It's yeah. Defeated. Like like his butt. Like an old man. You saw him. You saw him spry on Thursday. A little bit tired. He just didn't have the pep in his step on Friday. And then Saturday, you just saw an old man having to come up early in the cold. Yeah. And then Sunday, it was like just a warrior battling to finish. It was, I was, I didn't like it. I'm not going to lie to you. Cause I love Tiger Woods and I didn't like to see him fight and battle like that. I have to. Cause physically, I mean, it makes you think like I'm old. But but you didn't be able train to like a Navy SEAL. Yeah, your body's not, like his like his body's fucked up. And it's up. not even from golf. It's from like extracurricular training and, and, and a massive car accident. Yeah, the massive car oh, accident. That, yeah. that, that was like, they were, he was able to kind of come back from that. And then that is like the, the straw that broke. It's amazing he lived through that, to be honest. <laughs> didn't he almost lose his leg too in that one? Yeah, way? they thought they might have to oh, amputate God. his shin down. Lastly, about golf then. In order for me to really be as invested as I've ever been. I need the live players and the PGA players to play together week in and week out. I, as much as I hate Bryson, that guy was polarizing this week. Yep. And there was parts, there was times when I looked at him and I was just like, I think if I, with all his quirks, I didn't like him. $10,000 3d printed irons that he had. I got approved the day that before. That got approved on Tuesday by the USGA. What a weirdo. That's the same guy who played a movable object of a sign. Nobody would think to pick up a master sign that says amen corner this way. And the, whatever bridge that is this way, but he picks it up and moves it. Cause it's a man-made movable object. Like his quirks, the things he does, I didn't used to like, but I found myself being well, like, he's, he's evolved. I miss this. He used to be the guy that wore those hats and yeah. like, Did he have all the like, irons be the same length or something. The same yeah. as the six iron workout videos, you know, and like, now it's like, he's kind of, I shouldn't say pace. Like it's, it's, 
it's more endearing now yes, than before. Good. And it's good for the game. And like yeah. seeing him and battling at the top, like that's, that broad eyes. I mean, the PGA and live need to figure this th- thing out because in my, my, in my view, golf world is not big enough for two. Do you know any of the storylines of live? Like, do you know who's I won do. what tournaments? Uh, no, 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 no. Who's good. Yes. I know who's good. There's like, one team that dominates the whole thing. And plays a team. They yeah, play as they teams. Play as teams. 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 There's an four. individual and a team. Yeah. Game. I think Brooks's team is pretty dominant. And then there's like five guys who nobody knows of. And they all just like being able to wear shorts. Like don't wear shorts at the majors, but let PGA, let them wear shorts. Fuck. Is Dustin Johnson on the good team? Uh, I don't know, man. I could have, I honestly couldn't tell you. I just know that there's one team that's dominant. And I know Zach Johnson, is he? He's, the most, he's bad for golf. <laughs> oh, he's well, yeah, he's always been. A, yeah. Anyways, there's liked. my golf review. This world's not big enough for two tours. Get everybody back playing together. I want to see the best on the best right now. If they don't come back, there's literally three people on live that could contend Scotty Scheffler. And there's about five on the PGA tour. And if they're not all together, it makes those eight weaker to battle. What if this guy continues to go? will be a small portion of like what Tiger Woods was. The dominance is unbelievable. It's not the same field. But, the ma- same but, but, so but he's winning majors though. But he's it's winning majors so though. so vanilla. And it's so, for him, I, I heard somebody say the perfect thing. When greatness gets great, they always strive for more. They are never happy. And therefore, they never stay in the moment and really absorb it. But they always have outside pressures. And then that is kind of the downfall of them where Scotty Scheffler's like, I'm great. And I don't need to keep pushing. Like I just need to do what I'm doing. A win at the masters doesn't identify me. I know who I am. I'm the best. Golfer in the world. And I believe that that's going to help with his longevity. He's got no vices. <sighs> Honestly, the thing that'll it's is fucking follow through, man. He's gonna blow out an ankle. He's gonna fucking tweak a knee. Like that to me isn't sustainable. No. Like look how much his fucking ankle is turned right his, over. His left ankle is supporting his whole body. I got like at some point that's <laughs> not gonna work. No, you have to figure that out. But right now, like it doesn't matter. That guy is so automatic and so clutch, so automatic. And no like, reactions what, to on anything that he did. What yesterday. sport? Do you, as the top five golfer in the world, tell a dominant golfer in the world who's the world number one a, a tip on how to become better at the thing he's bad at? Rory McIlroy looked at him and put it in the news and said, Scotty Scheffler would become a better putter if he took away from that blade and went to a mallet. Scheffler did a week later and it has was- completely changed his putting. Wow, because that was a whole knock on him. Like, oh, like the greens are too tough. Scotty, yeah, Scotty's not advice. a good putter. You think Connor Davis gonna be like, you know, off Kucherov? Just- well, <laughs> wonder what is on that Terry Woods note. <laughs> yeah, what if, God, no, that's I don't know, happened. man. Golf is just fascinating, and I love the sport, but I just I feel like there's so many good golfers out right now, and it's just being split in half. And you- anyways, on to the next one. OJ, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we've already blown past an hour. No. Yeah. We were going to get into a whole deep conversation about... Save it for Thursday. Okay. There you go. Pre-prepped. Big shout out to Duragard. You're you're not going to be here. Nope. That's why I'm saying save it for Thursday. (laughs) We'll forget. (laughs) All right. Uh, Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Enjoy the last couple of Oilers games, and we'll be back Thursday. Playoffs. Soon. Playoffs. Oil up.